Well, you know, I thought I would get more sun rays than that coming in through that little spot there. I guess underneath, oh, look at, there's a little bean that looks like, well, to me anyway, it looks like underneath the sun. Looks like a Pleiadian sun god or something. And the cat's meowing. Yeah, right under the sun. That's where the sun is. That other part is just reflecting kind of on the other side of the tree. There's a branch right there, as you can see. It's about as close as I can get. There's some sun entities. Hello, Pleiadians. Hello, Alcyone. Alcyone, are you giving the giving our sun a little bit of a push? Yeah. Look at those. Hi, everybody. Yeah. I thought I'd see a lot more rays shooting off of it, though. That's kind of odd. See one down below it. But then, I don't. Yeah, kind of interesting. Oh, look at the faces starting to turn around on the other guy. Hi, son. How are you? Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Is the planet shifting into a higher vibration as we go through this, you know, this consciousness ascension, this dimension ascension. Dimensional ascension, I love it. I love that term, dimensional ascension. That's what we're going through right now. Planet, life on the planet, life, became, life becomes more lively with every step we take, every phase we go through. Um, we come up with more and more colorful ways of expressing ourselves, like literally mentally and physically. It's all sorts of wonderful things. You know, mentally, physically, visually, um, all sorts of ways of expressing ourselves, and that gets us more in tune with the collective as a whole. I mean, all of creation, everyone, everything that lives and breathes, everything that is capable of existing in a non-physical realm. Yeah. Interesting though, and they're giving. Hi guys, hi Alcyone. Say hi to the rest of the crew for me back in Pleiades. Say hi to mom and dad, Atlas and Pleone. Pleone, mama Pleone. Left the note on the door, she said, Sonny, move out to the country of the Pleiades. I'll take on a little Billy Joe song. I like that. Instead of Mama Leone, it could be Mama Pleone. You know, Daddy Atlas, Big Daddy Atlas. And the Seven Sisters. Merope. Estrope. Caliano. Tagetta. Tagetta, tagetta. You know, tomato, tomato, tagetta, tagetta. Yes, Maya. Mm -hmm. Oh, the rest of them? Oh, yeah, I know the rest. Sure, no problem, no problem. I know the rest of the cluster. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course I do. Electra. I forgot the rest of them. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. Did I? Now I got my, me wondering. Before I hang this up, I'm going to have to recite them all real quick. Let's see. Yes, we got Mama Pleone, Big Daddy Atlas. And you've got Alcyone, I would assume is probably the big sister. Alcyone, Tagetta, uh, Caliano, Morope, Electra, uh, Maya, Estrope, Estrope, Estrope. Yeah, I think I said all nine of them there. Remember, there's nine stars. Nine stars, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, now where'd the sun go? Oh, back over this way. Nine of them. Seven sisters, two parents. And you know, and the Pleiadians really are a reflection of just life in general, life. When I say life, I mean life, like creation. They, it's not just that they are the perfect human type of a being, you know, in their physical form. You know, perfect body, healthy, smart, great looking, colorful, all kinds of different colors. Um, they're also, their elemental nature, their fairy kingdoms, um, you know, wisps, gnomes, um, Ganeshes, you know, their own form of the Ganesh called the Pleiadian Heart Star. Um, their elemental kingdoms are just simply amazing. Their tree of life is amazing. I've had a visual of the tree of their life, and if ever I can have an artist do it, I'm going to have them, you know, with my thoughts, describe and put down onto a painting or a picture their, their tree of life. You know, we have our own versions of the tree of life here, you know, the tree with nine different gods or nine different dimensions you can look into you know nine different things going on right um and then i've seen a modern day version of one that looks kind of like a computer which probably was more like how the old one was if there ever was such a thing everything's a metaphor for everything though so there's some truth to everything otherwise it never would have been thought of 
And a wise man once told me that anything you could possibly ever think of is true in an endless parallel reality multiverse universe. You know, everything you could possibly think of is true. But the Pleiadians, they're everywhere. Their energy's every, everywhere, you know. And I could, I could see why they'd only come to people that, uh, you know, if it's not meant for you to see, you're not going to see it. Because they don't want to freak people out. They're, it's, a, it's a little bit much sometimes. I mean, they're all over the place. They're in our grass, in our trees, in our, just everywhere. They're, they're teeming with life. Uh, and they're there as an example with us to hold the energy you know, to hold that energy of life. You see them smiling everywhere you look. If you're totally connected with them in that particular Pleiadian energy, yeah, you're gonna see their little smiley faces everywhere. And sometimes their faces can look a little grumpy, but that's just, you know, how they look. They're, they're a very sarcastic, um, humorous type of a race. Very sarcastic and humorous. And so, you know, they're funny. It's like right now, if you look directly straight up where that sun was, go to the left and go up the, that tree hill a little bit and you'll see you know you'll see them looking like matchstick men standing there waving back and forth with what looks to be right behind it a tiny little other another sun in the middle of what looks to be like a UFO cloud coming by it you know and there's the matchstick men pictures of matchstick men Yep, yeah, just pictures of matchstick men and you. When I look into the sky, I see you rise, a funny kind of yellow. Pictures of matchstick men. Pictures of matchstick men. That was an old psychedelic song I like. Great tune to it. And someday I'll get into it with everybody, too. My channeling I had about 13 years ago. I keep promising I'm going to again, but I don't. Of when the Pleiadians, I was channeling them, and they informed me that they... Personally, well, they went into talking about Nikola Tesla first. Then they were talking about how they influenced the Beatles um, halfway through their career when the Beatles went over to India to visit the Maharishi. And it was around that time they changed their style, their music. You know, of course, rock and roll was changing altogether. It was going more from the, you know, doo-wop, wop-wop, good, clean-cut, white bread, all-American, in-denial type of a reality to, hey, everything's out in the open. You know, everything's colorful. Everything's going to be controversial now and here we go full speed ahead well it, you know it didn't work out exactly that way but you know you get you get the picture right and so the Beatles were the perfect reflection of that and they were explaining to me you know from the I want to hold your hand type of a uh, music they did to their you know hardcore stuff like Helter Skelter later on and they were also explaining to me how it they were the spark that ignited the thought for psychedelic rock for the hippie colors, for the colorful, they thought that the culture on the planet needed a little bit of a pick-me-up, um, needed to kind of have something, a wild card hit them that just broke them free or started to, you know, break their minds free from that very condensed, you know, one frame of mind, one track mind, you know, everything's the same, little boxes, everybody in the neighborhood looks the same kind of mentality, you know, you get up, go to school, come home, eat, do your homework, or go, do your homework, eat, go to bed, you know, get up, same thing all over again, go to school, come home, play for a bit, eat, do your homework, you know, so yeah, that might be the biggest um, bit of diversity you had back then was that, you know, you could maybe eat instead of doing your homework first, if your, you know, parents were really cool, <laughs> or whatever, but they wanted to kind of break that mold, and then what happened was the 60s and the early 70s were a very turbulent time, especially in the western countries due to Vietnam and things like that, and they felt like they needed some kind of a music to come along to settle things down a little bit, but yet keep people pepped up and still have a colorful scene to it. So what came next? Disco. Yeah. So they did in the channeling that I had, they credited themselves with a disco and psychedelic rock, the hippie colors coming our way, Nikola Tesla's ideas, the Beatles sort of rebirth. Um, they mentioned Edgar Casey to me too. They did not take credit for that. That is, they say that the Arcturians were, that was the energy that worked mostly with him, but they had dealt with him a little bit on some of his thoughts. Or, you know, they say they they claimed about, oh, they said that about 15 to 20% of his, his writings may have been influenced by them. Somewhere in that ballpark. And then, yeah, that was, that was pretty intense, and that, that wasn't why I was contacting them at the time. It was, 
Well, that was for another reason. That was because of some sun gazing I was doing, and I had a question regarding Alcyone at the time, and that's what made me think of that just now, is because that sun made me think of Alcyone. But look now, look now, there, yeah, and there it's kind of backed off a little bit, but uh, yeah. Well, folks, it's been good. I was just going to take a little bit of a picture here, and I thought I'd share a few words. Oh, I will be coming back on the air in a little bit. I'm going to talk about blue healing, you know, different kinds of healing that blue energies can give you. I'm going to discuss that, and I'm also going to talk about a little side thing I'm going to start up, a consulting, a little one-person consulting company when it comes to using blue using the color blue yes you heard me right using the color blue for some healing maybe in your life now that could be for spiritual reasons that could be for um organizational reasons it could be for anything that doesn't have to do with me operating on you or giving you any kind of advice um as far as using any kind of a substance that could impair you okay so what i'm saying is i'm not a doctor i don't think anybody would ever accuse me of being one um, although, you know, years and years ago, I was accused of, told I should be a pharmacist, but, uh, <laughs> please believe me, folks, it wasn't meant as a compliment. It wasn't because of my math skills. Um, but what I wouldn't want to do is give me the impression that I'm trying to be a doctor to you, or, and I would always suggest that if you're, if you feel, it's one thing to talk to me about an issue and use my services, right? But if you feel like um, it's something that you need on an ongoing basis, I would be the first one to tell you, you know, look, um, you might want to go see, go see a specialist yourself. You might want to at least confer with one, you know. But I wouldn't say that all. It would just depend on the scenario. But nothing, I'm not going to recommend anything to you that would possibly impair your body. You know, unless, unless the color blue itself, unless just looking at the color blue or thinking about the color blue in great detail and being open to the color of blue doing certain things, um, unless that is something that could um, really go make you go crazy, then I guess there's that. I have to use that disclaimer, right? So, no, you'll never get any advice from me about ingesting anything. Um, and you'll never get my advice on, you know, changing your medications up, anything like that. The only thing I might ever tell you is talk to your doctor about it. You know, if I had a thought, if I was had a concerning thought, I would say, why don't you run this by your doctor? But please understand, it doesn't matter what I said. I don't care if I was right. Your doctor is the end all. That's what they go to school for, okay? That's what they're paid for. And they know things we don't know. Okay, I may know one thing. You know, I think like I used to think I was such a, a, a expert when it come to opioid drugs, right? Well. No more than a pharmacist, again, back to that. Yeah, well, in that, on that one drug, there were certain things I probably knew more than some pharmacists. In fact, I know I did, but we're talking one medication. We're talking about um, for one, obje for one um, goal, and that was just to satisfy my own addiction, right, back then. That's the reason I knew all that stuff. You know, I wasn't learning it so I could um, care about other people and, you know, have that in mind when I'm prescribing medicines to people or when I'm the one feeling somebody's prescription. All right, so yes, I might have known one thing about, you know, they might have 25 things that they're, that they would get a B, B on a report card for, you know? And then I might know zero crap about 24 of those things, right? But there's one thing I do know a lot about and I'd get an A minus in it. Okay, that, that's about how I would compare my knowledge to a doctor, you know what I mean? So, you know, 25 things, they're getting a they're getting a solid B in. Me and F and every one but one, and that one I'm getting an A minus in over them. But you see what I'm saying? That's a good analogy right there. Okay. That's why you should always go with what the doctor says. And that's why there are second opinions, and that's why there's other doctors. But this blue healing energy, it's gonna deal with um, about the most radical thing that you'll be dealing with is different kinds of meditations involving blue, maybe a little bit of um, light language, a little bit of um, guidance from spirit guides, um, different activities that involve the color. You know, I don't want to give a whole rundown list, but and believe me, um, I would get to know you a little bit first and then we'd come up with a plan and figure out which would be the best course of action to take and which one sounded the best to you, okay? But I'll explain a little bit about that here in a bit. It's like the sun has gone away. Well, there it is right there. Another spot here. 
Anyway, this has been Rockin' Larry Lo Oh, hey, I want to point out one thing. Do you see straight ahead right there? This is what I was all fixated on and lost my train of thought because my eye tunes for these things. You probably can't tell, but in that middle tree right there, right in the middle, the one with all the holes poked through it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to bring the camera down and come down to where... Okay, now do you see... Okay, right above, right below the top of the... It would be over to my right. So if you're watching this, it would be to your left, I mean. It's that right, oh, damn it, right <laughs> there, there. It looks a little bit more solid white than the rest of it. Yeah, now if you tone in, it looks more solid white. That's not because of the sun hitting it right there or anything. Trust me, it's not. That is, that is solid. It's fairly solid. It's not what you would call through third dimensional solid, but it's a lot more, um, it's a lot more dense than the rest of those openings through there. Yeah, it's gonna have a tuned eye for that kind of stuff. Yeah, and at the very top of it, it looks kind of like there's a round, like head on it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't, you know, people may think I'm crazy, but there are other people that see this stuff too that I have never said anything to, and I will run into their videos and run into them talking about it, and yeah, they see it too. Yeah, just like right here, you'd, I'd have to point that out to you too, but right directly, right in the middle of your screen right now, in those trees, straight down, there's a face right there. And then there's some openings right next to it that are a little more solid. And then a sun starting to come back by through it. Of course, that, that ain't the sun though, because the sun's over a lot further over to the right from my standpoint. Yeah. yeah. So that's the way it is. It's it and that's that, people. Rockin' Larry Lockin'. If you want to know anything about me, go to the go to the Facebook page, Rockin' Larry Lockin' social media outlets. Rockin' Larry Lockin' social media outlets. That'll have everything I'm involved in. The whole network of Larry Lockin stuff. You know, I keep messing up and calling it the Larry Lockin, Rockin' Larry Lockin outtakes, outsize, outcries. Should be an outcry. Um, I should just name it the Larry Lockin Network. I might do that. <laughs> Who knows? I'm a legend in my own mind for eternity. Peace.